Divine Truth Feedback Jesus, Mary and others give personal or group feedback to people who have asked for personal assistance. Jesus and Mary give personal feedback to Mary Chisholm on the issue of helping spirits in emotional pain. The session was recorded on the 25th of November 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. G'day everyone. Mary Magdalene and Jesus here. <laughs> <laughs> We're filming another personal feedback session this afternoon <laughs> in our studio. And this one is in response to a personal email we received from a lady called Mary Chisholm from the United States. And Mary did email us some time ago, it was back in April. And we're sorry, Mary, it's taken us a while to get to your, your question. Yes. We have a lot of them. Yes. So uh, we're doing our best to try and help people out with some of these things um, as time goes on. So let's get down to her question. Hey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Jesus, Mary and staff, I just wanted to say thank you so much for all the information you have shared about Divine Truth. It's our pleasure. Absolutely. <laughs> I've been reading and listening to your videos, transcripts for months now, and your message has really changed my life. That's great. I would like to begin sharing your message with distressed spirits. As a member of a local paranormal investigation group, I feel I have the tools and medium to pass on your message and help spirits in need at haunted sites. Mm. I do have one question as to how to do this. Would spirits be able to hear one of your videos if I sat in a haunted location and just played it through my headphones instead of out loud? Can I invite them to telepathically listen? Would you suggest a more effective way I could do this? <laughs> Our group will be investigating the Gettysburg battlefields for three days in June, mm -hmm. and I would want to make the most of this visit and help the most spirits I can. Yes. Sorry, Mary, it's after it's June. After June. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well after. Yeah. Thank you again and sorry for the long email. That's a not a long email. Yeah, I was going to say, firstly, Mary, <laughs> that's probably one of our shortest emails that yeah. we've ever gotten. Uh, and it gets to the point which we really like. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I think the first thing we need to talk about is the whole, as the whole concept of haunted places. Um, mm. Usually spirits who are earthbound, who haunt or stay around locations, um, there are two types of spirits, you could say, who do this. So one type is a type of spirits who wish to scare people, who wish to harm people on earth. And the other type of spirits is a person that is there because they don't know where else to go. Yeah. So obviously the first group of people, if they have a purposeful desire to harm others, they're going to be much more difficult to help mm -hmm. than the second group of people. So that's the first thing that needs to be borne in mind if you're going to help some spirits on, from the earth. Yeah. So, and it's important you've made the distinction. So these haunted sites are really just places where there are spirits who are living on earth the majority of their time yep. there's two sorts mary's really called them all distressed but what you're saying is there's some of them who are there with sort of a malicious intent really yes. and some of them are there because they're just lost and they don't know what to do next yes yeah. yes okay. and often of course uh, people are very very attached to the location where they died mm. so you know if they died in a car accident on the road they often stay with that accident until the cars are taken away and then yeah. they don't know where to go so they often follow go to where their grave is then yeah. and, and so forth and so many people who are earthbound who are not attached to pe other people on earth so we're now we're talking about spirits who are not engaged in codependent emotional addictions with other people on earth yeah. but rather who are uh, haunting or sp or specifically at a s certain location for a reason and usually the reason is that they died there or there was a, a primary event in their life that occurred there or you know they've gone back to their own home to live mm -hmm. you know because they think they're still on earth and they go back to their own home to live only to find somebody else is living in their home or they go back to their place of work and stay in their place of work because they find that you know, you know they don't really that was what they were the most attached to yeah they might find family members who they spend time with and so forth they're not uh, in codependent addictions generally, except to the normal addictions that a normal person would have uh, on from the earth while passing. Mm -hmm. um, and 
they often are not even aware that they're passed for a period of time yeah. because they, but they realise they can't communicate to certain people, that certain people don't listen to them anymore. And sometimes that makes them angry because they feel like, well, why is nobody listening to me anymore? You know, they can see me, surely I can see them. They don't even realise they've died. And, uh, and, you know, there is also confusing aspects about their life. Uh, they have confusion about why it is that sometimes when they think of somebody, they go straight to that person and yeah. things like that. And then when they think of another event, they go back to another place. It sort of becomes very, uh, it feels to be like a very haphazard sort of a life where there's no procedure to get somebody mm. where and, and people get a bit confused with that initially. So there's a lot of confusion associated with death. And then on top of that, we have the additional problems, which are nobody on earth receives an education about what happens after they die generally. Yeah. So very, very few people, even mediums, are, are not aware of what happens after they die. Yeah. So I've met many mediums who, before they've died and then also after they've died and uh, and only they've they've often described a completely different experience than what they imagined mm -hmm. so you know there is a huge amount of confusion yeah. about death and everything on the earth and in the spirit world um, both in mm -hmm. both locations so bearing all that in mind the yeah. question then becomes how do we help them yes now, helping uh, groups of spirits uh, can be quite easy at times or quite difficult depending on the circumstances and situation. Now, the best way that you can help a group of spirits is to be able to be sensitive to them emotionally. Mm -hmm. Now, the majority of people on earth aren't in the condition where they can be sensitive emotionally. So they can't engage that type of assistance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you so were going to say. Yeah, I want to ask you to clarify that. You're talking about being sensitive emotionally. Yes. You're not talking about some kind of uh, mediumistic ability. You're talking no. about feeling the emotions of a spirit. Well, yeah, what people classify as mediumistic or psychic abilities are really just the sensitivity to specific emotions. Mm. And what I'm suggesting is if you're going to help a spirit properly, you need to be sensitive uh, or you could say as another terminology psychically you know sensitive yeah. to all emotion mm. not just to a specific emotion the problem with be uh, being only sensitive to specific emotions and closing down from being sensitive to other emotions is if a spirit has the particular emotion that you're closing down towards yeah. it's going to be very very difficult to help them because you will not connect to them emotionally and they really need an emotional connection with you in order to in order for them to move forward. So, so this is the first thing we need to understand that love, which which would demand, if you think about it, an emotional connection with the person you're listening to, would need to be displayed. So we can't just go along to a it's a haunted site, so I'm going to get rid of these spirits, sit down with a whole heap of apparatus, play a, t a show or whatever, and expect all those spirits to listen to you. Mm -hmm. Some of those spirits might, but it would be fairly rare for them to listen if there was no emotional connection with the person. And it would be very rare for them to listen if they were actually ma um, ma malevolent spirits, yep. Yep. where they'd just laugh at the person, actually. Yeah. So, you know, you can't really help malevolent spirits move from an earthbound condition unless you purposefully engage them when on a one on one conversation or on a group on one conversation. Mm -hmm. So what that means then is that the most effective way of helping a group of spirits or an individual spirit is the way we do it, which mm -hmm. is having one med a medium who is able to connect to the spirits themselves and ac accurately reflect what the spirit is saying and then have another person who is emotionally connected to the truth of their condition the spirit's condition who actually talks with the spirit and who loves the spirit mm -hmm. and who can help the spirit progress to a brighter place in the spirit world and therefore out of pain and suffering now if anybody recently yesterday in fact we did a mediumship session with helping a, a man who was in his 50s from the earth who had been dead for 31 years who had passed over and he di died from a shotgun wound uh, accidental but he uh, was in a state of fear and terror when we met him and that will give you an example of mary who was who connected to the 
the spirit themselves and mm. accurately reflected the spirit, what the, what the spirit wanted to say. And myself, who was connected to the spirit, but who knew the truth about the spirit situation mm. and, where, and what he needed to work through in order to be able to grow and change in the spirit world and therefore alleviate his pain. So that is the most effective form of helping a spirit or a group of spirits who are in a dark condition in any location. So, so if we rewind a bit, you talked about um, the point you made about being able to assist or even really being able to be aware of spirits is that we need to be sensitive emotionally. Yes. Now, in that example you gave of you and I doing the mediumship session yesterday, yep. you were very sensitive emotionally. We were both very sensitive emotionally to the spirit, weren't we? Yes, you allowed, you, you gave him the gift of love of accurately reflecting what he wanted to say through you, not what you could feel he was mm -hmm. feeling always, but yeah. what he wanted to say. Yeah. And you gave him that gift, which is a gift of love. Yep. So, so this was what was attracted. Uh, it, it caused him to be attracted to to you to express himself through you, mm -hmm. and then I gave him the gift of being connected to him emotionally fully, and and could actually feel exactly what's going on inside of him and exactly what is the problem or what needed to be presented to him as a solution to his problems, mm -hmm. in order to help him progress in the spirit world. And if a person examines most of our mediumship that we do together, they will see that general pattern. Mm -hmm. And there's been plenty of mediumship we've done together that has been recorded by sound only. And if they listen to the general thing, it is always yourself connected mm -hmm. to the medium and giving, them the gift, giving him or her the gift of the connection and myself connected to the person and loving the person through the process of helping them to progress. Mm. So in the case of Mary, we don't know if... Um well, she's she a medium. has a mediumistic ability. She does, she does, but she is also quite shut down emotionally in, mm. ma in many emotional ways. Mm -hmm. so, so it's going to be very, very hard for her to accurately reflect through her mediumship to another person, the spirit she's talking to. And it also is going to be very hard for her to find another person who is sensitive enough to feel what that particular spirit needs to be told and whether that particular spirit is actually listening to what's being told or not. Yeah. So, so we find that a lot of people try to copy what we do, but because they're not sensitive emotionally, they have no idea what they're actually doing. Mm -hmm. And that, so I would not encourage engaging what we do um, in a in a situation that's uh, critical mm -hmm. because at the end of the day unless you really know what you're doing you can do a lot more harm than good yeah you can have spirits masquerading as one thing when really they're another thing and that's happening a lot entering addictive kind of exchanges yes there's many people trying to copy what we do but who are actually entering ad addictive interactions with spirits who are manipulating and controlling them and actually masquerading as you know, sad spirits or other kinds of spirits only to gain a foothold in their life, in, mm -hmm. the, in those person's lives, and then to later on uh, malevolently damage their life. Yeah. So it's a, you, you can engage this process. If you're not fully aware emotionally of what's going on, you can engage a whole group of spirits who, whose only motivation is to damage your own life as a medium or damage the life of the person who's attempting to help uh, rather than actually grow themselves. Mm. So uh, we see that occurring a lot, particularly in the United States. Mm. So um, we, there's obviously a lot of people in the United States um, who believe they, who want to help spirits, but, but a lot of them unfortunately are doing it for the wrong motivations, which causes the attraction. Mm -hmm. And many times the motivation is one of wanting superiority or wanting glory or wanting attention or some other motivation inside the medium or the person helping the medium. Yeah. And, and it causes a huge amount of attraction of malevolent spirits then who masquerade as people who are needing help but who aren't actually people who mm. want help. Okay, so from what you've said, here's Mary. She has some mediumistic ability. She's interested in this assistance or she feels she's interested in assisting spirits. Yep. Uh, she's in this group. They're going off to, say, the Gettysburg battlefields or wherever which, they which go. Which is a loving act, yep. a loving act of trying to help people who, who are in a place of pain and suffering emotionally. Who are stuck where they are. Who are stuck where they are. Yeah. Yep. But you're saying unless she is sensitive emotionally, she, one, won't be able to feel all of the spirits who are there. 
Yes, not only will she not only be able to feel all the spirits that are there, but go on, she'll be... Yeah, but two, she won't actually be able to accurately uh, portray even the spirits that she can feel. So she won't be able to accurately reflect the, commu the, communication, the communication they wish to so, give. Yeah, but and in order for, even if she could do that second thing, she would need someone with her, quite likely, who could actually assist... She. Who was also sensitive to the spirit. <laughs> and their emotions. Yeah. Who could assist that person to make a change and progress. Yes. And then on top of that, I'm basically saying that unless both parties are in a very, very open emotional state and open to any emotion of, of any kind, mm -hmm. then it probably means that they won't be able to do that in a very positive way. Mm -hmm. They won't be able to help the spirits in a very positive mm -hmm. way under those circumstances. So what I'm saying is... Yeah. The best possible way to help them is to do what we do. Yeah. However, many people try to copy what we do without doing the emotional work necessary before we've begun doing it. Mm -hmm. And what they so what they try to do is imitate it without actually making the soul-based changes first that are required to to happen before you can actually do it. Yep. And this is where I feel the majority of people who attempt to help spirits fall into some traps. And the traps are there are a lot of malevolent spirits on the earth who are waiting for connections to spirit mm -hmm. people on earth who are willing to just play with them or manipulate their lives or even uh, damage their lives in some way. And many mediums become uh, victims mm. of, of that manipulation and damage because of their own lack of emotional sensitivity. Yeah. yeah. When you can truly so. feel a person, you can feel their intent. Mm -hmm. If you can't truly feel a person then you won't know what their intent is. No. Yeah. So basically we can't really assist anyone unless we can be sensitive to their intent, whether yes. they're on earth or in spirit form. Yes. So the very first thing we must do is develop ourselves emotionally. Obviously the fastest way to do that is to receive God's love. Uh, other, uh, and to do that, we need to go through recognising and becoming an awakening into our sin, mm -hmm. working through our sin and, and receiving the, the, the love that comes with the repentance that we engage mm -hmm. and the forgiveness that comes as a part of that repentance process. Now, the majority of people on earth uh, that we know even aren't doing that. So, so the reality is that it's going to be difficult for the majority of people who are mediums at this point to help in a true, sincere way, help spirits who are in dark condition unless they engage that process themselves yeah. and if you think about it, uh, it it's hypo hypocritical to do anything else how can you help a spirit who's in emotional pain when you yourself are trying to shut down your own emotional pain mm. so it's obviously a hypocritical thing yeah. to attempt and no person who truly loves another or themselves or loves god or god's laws would attempt to do something that's hypocritical so so what I'm suggesting is the very first thing, if you really want to help the spirits, is focus all of uh, your effort on your emotional and spiritual and love-based development. Mm. Now, that being said, there are still ways that we can help spirits. Good, because right. otherwise, because <laughs> otherwise it would say poor Mary would feel pretty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty Obviously, happy. the second thing I would suggest is. Once you've developed yourself emotionally and allowed yourself to become more and more emotionally sensitive and, uh, and obviously receive more and more of God's love, you become more and more sensitive to every spirit around you, not just the spirits who are in a huge amount of pain. Now, the spirits who are in areas of war, for instance, in the Gettysburg mm -hmm. area, and, or, you know, also, but also like first second world wars, yeah. any place of trauma on the earth that's currently occurring and die from that trauma, those particular people are often in a severe amount of, of emotional trauma. They're very much like people with post-traumatic stress that's, that's been caused just in their memory from yeah. yesterday. Yeah. So, so obviously they frequently are not yet in the condition to, to listen or they are in such a afraid and afraid condition that they are terrified, very similar in their terror to the man that we met. Uh, few, yesterday. yesterday yeah and even the, uh, more mm -hmm. uh, terror than that because there there was the lead up of the war or the lead up of the conflict before their death mm -hmm. and so often they were afraid of rape torture abuse and dying all at the same time before yeah. they died yeah. and many of them died using uh, with one of those methods mm. so that uh, you know obviously would be a huge amount of trauma for them yeah. 
Now, a spirit in trauma um, needs particular care and therefore, and also needs particular understanding of trauma itself. Mm. And this requires a large amount of emotional sensitivity mm -hmm. on the part of the person helping them. Mm. Now, the majority of people on Earth are very detuned to trauma, which is the reason why trauma occurs on Earth fre frequently. Yeah. It's because we're so detuned from it that, that we allow situations to get very, very bad and therefore very, very violent before we realise there's a real problem. Mm -hmm. And even then we ignore most of it. And so most people on Earth are very insensitive to violent trauma uh, of any kind, uh, but uh, particularly it being emotional. Yeah. And so a person who's going to help these particular people who's going to need to have uh, some experience with emotional trauma mm -hmm. and have some experience with getting out of emotional trauma and being able to help the spirits do so. Mm -hmm. So that, that in itself, again, is another, another issue factor. that is very difficult to... Uh, why it's very difficult for these people of, from mediumship circles to help groups of spirits who are, who are in such uh, a condition. So what about uh, Mary's obvious desire is to help spirits not only to progress but to actually find divine truth. Yes. What if she visits um, there with a very sincere prayer that some other spirits who maybe are more sensitive or more emotionally open uh, could come and help those spirits? Is that possible? Yes. And this is probably one of the most effective ways that she could work if there is not the emotional sensitivity within itself to address the other issues. Mm -hmm. Because uh, what you're doing now is you're placing, you're, you're firstly having a connection with the person who's on the earth, but who, who is in spirit, in the haunted location, if we could yeah. call it that, which yeah. is really just a location usually where trauma or some kind of uh, event that has happened in their life has occurred. Mm -hmm. And and what you do is you, you let, you, you allow the connection with yourself and then invite another spirit of a bright condition mm -hmm. to help that person. Now, the only problem with that, again, is how do you, if you're not emotionally sensitive, how do you know that the other person who, who has come to help is actually a helping spirit mm. or a spirit of even more malevolence who just wants to uh, harm the spirit who you're trying to help? Yeah. If you're not emotionally sensitive, you don't know. And therefore, you may, in fact, be introducing a spirit who has been harmed mm -hmm. to an abusive person who's going to harm them further. Yeah. And unless you're emotionally sensitive, you won't know the difference. Mm -hmm. So even that has its own issues and problems. Yes. It uh, is effective if you do, if you can feel, the, if you have a particular spirit that you trust, mm -hmm. that you know has progressed, on the divine truth path in the spirit world and has received some of God's love and you have a connection with that spirit and you have a regular connection with that spirit and you ask that spirit to organize the helpers, mm -hmm. then there is a higher likelihood, obviously, of getting the right help helpers rather than somebody who's going to be malevolently harming the spirit you're trying to help. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, what happens in a lot of circles is they invite so-called brighter spirits to the location because they are not sensitive to the uh, spirit's condition that they've invited, and the spirits are often in a worse condition than the people on earth imagine, yeah. often what they do is invite an abuser to come and abuse the person again. Yeah. And this is causing, this does cause a lot of damage as well. Mm. So obviously there's a lot of potential pitfalls if mm. we're not emotionally sensitive. Mm. Yep. Now, if we're not emotionally sensitive, there is still, though, a way we can help spirits. Okay. First thing we can do is pray for them. We can go to the location and actually pray for them, long for God's love, long for them to have a feeling that they would like to have some of God's love, and they will notice you brighten up as a result of the prayer, mm -hmm. and, they, and they will also have a little bit of faith because you have some, and as a result, they may try to actually do what you suggest mm. in the prayer. And as a result, they'll hopefully receive some of God's love. And in that moment, they will usually have some kind of emotional release and also brighter spirits who are involved with God's love and have received God's love themselves will now be able to come and assist them. Mm. So that, that is a very powerful thing you can yeah. do.
And it's very powerful, isn't it? Just the presence of someone with faith yes. in sincere prayer. Yes. Um, even that prayer lightens the em- spiritual environment around the yes. person praying. So yes. a lot of spirits are caught still <laughs> in um, abusive situations with spirits both spirits, one is being abused and one is the abuser, yep. they're caught in this um, pattern yes. on earth, earthbound. earthbound and yes. if a person who has a lot of faith enters that area and prays for any spirit suffering, that abuser momentarily or for a period won't be actually be able to affect the Correct, they're disconnected person. from the, abuse, the person being abused yeah. by them. Yeah. And as a result of that, the person being abused can be helped yeah. generally. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of positive. If you this is the most effective. If you're not emotionally connected, and 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 fully emotionally open to almost every emotion, this is the next best way of mm-hmm. assisting groups of spirits. Mm-hmm. It is not and does not have much glory attached attached to it. Which is why. Which is one reason why the majority of people on earth never engage it, mm. because the majority of people on earth who do help spirits are often only helping spirits in order to engage some addictive purpose in their own self. And uh, as a result, someone just simply praying for the spirit and going to a location and praying for the people with no other desire than to help the person often is not, often people who desire to assist people are not quite that sincere Mm. about the assistance that they Mm -hmm. wish to give. Mm -hmm. But it is the most, second most effective method of yep. using to help a group of spirits of any kind who are earthbound or who are in the spirit world and not earthbound, mm-hmm. in fact. So, so my suggestion is engage that. If it has to, prayer is always a feeling of desire from the heart. So it's not an intellectual process. It requires your heart to be involved. You must feel it. Uh, you can't just think it. So it's no good getting a group of you together who think you've got the task to do it mm-hmm. with none of you having a desire to do it, do it from the heart and none of you feeling a feeling of love for those particular spirits because yeah. it won't work that way. Yeah. You, it needs to be a sincere, pure desire driven, motivated by your love for the individuals involved and it must come from your heart as a longing towards God to help those particular people. Mm. And it's not that God isn't trying to help them already. What it is, is that those particular spirits will notice your longing, they'll notice the faith, you'll, they'll notice your body brightened, and that will attract them. They'll also notice your feeling of love for them, which will attract them to listen to what you've got to say. Yeah. And that is a very powerful motivator for any spirit who has been for years and years in a dark condition haunting a specific location because they have nowhere else to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, that would be my suggestion as the second suggestion. Yeah. Um, so that's a very effective method of helping a group of spirits. It will always re- have results, mm-hmm. and it's very uh, and unless unless potentially the spirits are malevolent, and under those circumstances, you would generally, if you're open in the moment, you will generally feel the malevolence of the spirits and realize actually that the spirits here are just malevolent and they have real no desire, no real desire to move from where they are. And so you would not waste your time doing it under those circumstances. The only way we can really assist malevolent spirits is to deal with our own fears and addictions that might enable them to continue in their malevolence, would you say? Yes, the only way to sincerely, aside from the first method we've talked about, which which is a way to help malevolent spirits, um, the only way to actually help malevolent spirits, so this is our, probably our third point, mm-hmm. is the only way to really help malevolent spirits is to disconnect them from the addictive processes that they are engaged on the earth. Mm-hmm. That means that you personally must be disconnected from feeding their addictions mm. and you also must not allow them to feed yours. Yeah. So, so in other words, there is usually malevolent spirits have a codependent addiction And usually these addictions are based very much around power. So they have codependent addictions with people on earth regarding power, either wanting power over people or wanting a person on earth who they believe is is powerful Mm -hmm. in order to control. And and the only way to disconnect from those kind of spirits, you you will not convince them to do something different. It's very, very difficult to convince them through logical reasoning and argument. And any argument about love will definitely not have an effect on them initially. 
because they have not had an awakening to their sin. Mm. So, so what you need to do for those particular spirits is disconnect them completely from getting any of their addictions met. Yeah. Of course, what that does is it increases substantially their rage, yeah. and and therefore, but also helps them uh, make the break from having their addictions met. And then you might be able to talk to them while they're in a rage, yeah. but only when you're open emotionally, as we pointed yes. out in the first point, yeah. to the feeling of rage, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which most people, and particularly most mediums, avoid like the plague. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, you know, again, it's going to be very difficult to communicate with them unless you're open emotionally. Yeah. But you will at least disconnect them yeah. from the earthbound process of getting mm. their addictions met or having control of other people. Which is very powerful because for the first moment, they're not able to act in their sin. Correct. And so they're more likely to be confronted with the gravity with their of their sin. Yeah. yeah, or at least with the anger of having, not having their addiction met. Yeah. And, and in fact, if every person on earth did this, there would be no spirits earthbound on earth except for spirits who are earthbound to a place. Yeah. It's in other words, there'd be no spirits earthbound because of the codependent addictions with people. Yeah. The majority of the 20 billion or so spirits who are earthbound at this point in time are earthbound because of codependent addictions with people. And we could get rid of the majority of those spirits just by stopping the codependent addiction. Yeah. Yep. A very powerful thing to do. Unfortunately, something that requires quite a lot of emotional development to do. Mm. So, so again, something that is quite difficult to do uh, and therefore, you know, not likely that the average person who's engaged in the process would would actually, unless they're fully sincere about their growth with God, with God would be able to engage. Mm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that leaves us one other choice, okay. really. <laughs> <laughs> the one other choice is, as she suggests in her document, in, in, in her email, email, and that is to be able to have somebody who does know some truth about these particular matters about spirits and how spirits engage and what spirits injury are and the love you know the love that comes from that particular person and to have that particular person you know get information across to the, the to the group so what you could do there is you could pray or long for the group to come to you mm -hmm. and then pray or long for that group to listen to the program that you're playing in your headphones is fine because mm -hmm. they can tune into your to what's played as in your headphones. Suggests, yep, as she suggests, as she suggests, you could just have it played it just quietly, mm -hmm. you know, just play it quietly out loud, you know, mm -hmm. on a on a deck of some kind, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. that you uh, a stereo, or, stereo something. or something. Just play it quietly out loud in the location. Sometimes it's good to go to the location because the spirits often will not move from that location. So mm -hmm. what you really need to do is go to the location to do it. Yeah. You pray or long for that the group of spirits to come to you and to listen to what you want to talk to them about or what, you know, or what you want to read to them or what you want them to listen to that somebody else has presented. Yeah. But you need to make sure that particular thing that you're reading or, or, you're, or, or they're listening to or is being presented to them is actually the truth. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's going to be very, very difficult. Yeah. Now, anybody who's in trauma can be helped by listening to a whole heap of other group of people who were in trauma, mm. right? So, so as we go through these mediumship sessions, Mary and I go through these, you and I go through mm. these mediumship sessions, then the, we will have more and more different types of people coming to us and you can actually play one of those sessions to that group of spirits you've yeah. invited to them and there's a high likelihood that group of spirits will listen because they'll have very similar emotions as long as the group of spirits have similar emotions to the group of spirits who are, who are listening in, pra in reality, yeah. then the recording and the reality are very similar in their emotional content, mm -hmm. and that will help the person in reality to, to connect to the material. It's like us watching a movie that has, has depicted very strong emotions that we ourselves have. Yes. Often it assists us to connect to those emotions more yes. strongly. So it's no good uh, taking a recording, for example, to this kind of location like Gettysburg uh, and play something about a group of children being helped. Yeah. Because the reality is the Gettysburg people are uh, people who have been to war. So mm -hmm. you want to be able to play something where, where you know, people who have gone to war are being helped. Yeah. So there is an emotional connection between yeah. that. And if you're praying again and longing for that, and, uh, uh, and, and what you do is long for 
the bright spirits to come as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, there's not much glory in it mm -hmm. <laughs> because, you know, it's, uh, you, you personally haven't done a large amount aside from exercising your love. Yeah, now, which in, is a large amount. In well, I, yeah, well, <laughs> I feel it's the largest amount you could probably do. Yeah. But unfortunately, most people on earth see that as a you know, minor thing compared to, you know, getting some glory or getting some tension or whatever. Or having a big um, metaphysical experience. It, exactly, and, yeah. which is a lot of times the addiction that's involved, wanting yeah. to have some kind of huge metaphysical, personal meta metaphysical experience rather yeah. than actually help a group yeah. of spirits. Yeah. But if you do that, then there's a high likelihood of many of this, particularly any in that group that are sincere, mm -hmm. are having a positive uh, reaction to the message mm. and therefore being able to be helped. Mm. You will not find. You will find that you will not be able to play materials such as like play a whole four-hour presentation of one of mine or something like that about love to the group, um, because that's not emotionally going to connect to that particular group. It, it, you need to establish an emotional connection yeah. with the spirit before you can help them. It's the mm -hmm. same as any person on earth. You have to do the same there too. Yeah. Yeah. And unless the emotional connection is established in some way, then you're not going to be able to assist the person because they're not going to be interested in the topic. Mm. The, it's the emotional connection that opens us up to receiving, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. And that is, uh, this is why it's so important to be sensitive emotionally because you, if you're sensitive emotionally, you can feel what the emotional connection is going to be yeah. and you make that connection. But if you're not sensitive emotionally, you won't make that connection. Mm. And, and, and what I'm suggesting is in places where there's been a war, it is very easy to know what the emotions are probably going to be yeah. and therefore bring along some material that is, is exactly the kind of material that has exactly the kind of emotions that you imagine the particular group who, who are there in haunting the location, mm -hmm. if we can still use that term, yeah. um, would listen to. Yeah. And that's a very powerful way to help that particular group. Yeah. 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 It also would also encourage that particular group to do the same things as what the person on the recording was was asked to do. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, there is a higher likelihood of the right spirits coming along to help yeah. and a higher likelihood of a good outcome. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so yeah. we'll recap, hey? Mm -hmm. So basically, Mary's question, and really we've made it into a general question, how do I help spirits? Yes. The very first and well, it's most... really how, still how do I help spirits in emotional pain. In really, emotional isn't it? pain, yeah. Because yeah. there are a whole group of spirits who need help. Of course. Who, yeah. But are not in emotional pain. Every spirit from the second to the sixth sphere still needs help to, to eventually connect to God. Mm -hmm. But they're not in emotional pain. They're mm -hmm. not earthbound. Mm -hmm. They're not connected to some location on earth. So, so you know... They, they have to be helped in a different manner, really, yep. than a person who's in emotional pain, earthbound on earth, in, in a certain location, haunting a location. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so yeah. to help those people who are earthbound and in pain, yeah. the very most effective thing that we can do is to gain emotional sensitivity as a medium and as a person who wants to assist spirits through a medium yeah. and to actually be open to any emotion that they have to have a good soul-based knowledge of divine truth so that that spirit can be assisted yes. very effectively and rapidly compar comparative to how long they've been in their pain. Correct. And, and if you think about it, that is going to take quite a lot of personal emotional development and personal development with the reception of God's love. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that's number one. Yeah. and It's the best option. It's the best option, but, but... not the option that the majority of people who are even listening to us could engage. Could engage. Yeah. Second best option is to go to places where you, you might even feel that there's spirits that are in pain and suffering there yep. and to pray for those spirits. Yes. You, this requires that you have some personal faith yourself. Yes. And that you long for God's love and assistance to help these spirits, to help ease their suffering or end their suffering. Yes. And to, you might, in addition, want to read something to them or something like that. But, yep. um, but really, even just the prayer is it's going to have a positive be. effect because they can feel somebody loves them. Mm -hmm. Somebody loves them. Mm -hmm. And this is something, particularly those people who haunt these particular locations of war, they often believe nobody loves them. Nobody mm -hmm. cares about them anymore. Hist history has passed them by. Yeah. Nobody cares about them anymore. To them, the war, is, the war is just as real as it happened yesterday. 
and nobody cares about it. Mm. And, and as a result of that, they you know, often feel a deep emotional disconnection from anyone on earth, and, but they feel a deep emotional connection to the location, mm-hmm. uh, which causes them to remain there. Yeah, mm. a lot of soldiers have a lot of feelings, don't they, yeah. about their worth as people and, yeah. and the, the significance of their life being attached to how it ended. That that was, a, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a sad situation for a lot of spirits. It isn't is, it? yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, <laughs> the third thing you discussed, well, the third thing was you discussed. Was being able to determine who's a malevolent spirit and who isn't. Exactly. <laughs> and then we briefly talked about the only way you could actually help malevolent spirits. Yes. Which was um, to actually end codependence with malevolent spirits, yes. basically. Yes. And what we notice is many people who think, who are listening to God's truth, listening to divine truth, uh, who think they're helping spirits are not actually helping spirits. They are involved in codependent addictions with malevolent spirits and they don't even know because they're not emotionally sensitive. Yeah, yeah. Which is sad. It is sad, yeah. It also causes the destruction generally of those groups. It causes the... There's a lot of very negative emotions in those particular groups that develop over time as a result of the malevolency of the spirits that they're connecting to. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So we often find they no longer listen to divine truth after they've done it. <laughs> yeah, which mm. is sad, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It actually uh, erodes or ruins their faith rather than yes. builds it. They don't yeah. realise that, but, but the malevolent spirit's purpose is to ruin their faith. Yeah. And, and because of their codependent addictions for glory and attention and so forth, and even just having a metaphysical experience of some kind, mm. without having the sensitivity to the the dark emotions, mm-hmm. um, they they have no idea that they're being manipulated. Yeah, mm. yeah. All right. And the fourth thing we discussed, um, which is if if you're not sensitive it, enough to feel if they're malevolent or just mm-hmm. suffering, <coughs> and you, you your mediumship, you're not open to emotions, so you can't engage that. If you don't even feel that you have enough faith to pray, then the next best thing you can do is actually to go to a location and either play in your headphones or play on some kind of publicly broadcast device some material that will help specifically, will relate specifically to the the suffering that these spirits in this location are involved in our engage uh, Correct. feeling yeah. and while it's playing pray that they are able to listen to it yeah. enough to understand and to take action on the material yeah. yeah yeah so so you know that can help those spirits quite quite a lot yeah and and far more than what those spirits have been helped any time previously in their yeah. experience after yeah. they've passed yeah. which obviously will have an impact upon those particular yeah. spirits it's a beautiful thing to have the inten- intention to yes. assist spirits, isn't it? But it we is. must be certain that it, it's a pure intention and not one Well, this one is based one thing I'd like addiction. to raise here, yeah. is that most mediums that I've talked to on earth don't have pure intentions. You know, this is why most of them charge for their, for their time, mm-hmm. because they actually don't have pure intentions. There's a, there's a, if they're charging for their time, they're already not having pure intention. Mm. So, you know, there's a personal gain from their mediumship. Many people who we've listened to mediumship from who've who've been engaged with divine truth don't have pure intentions either because their intention was about glory or or gaining attention from others or Mm -hmm. getting approval from others and so forth. And all of these emotions uh, attract very malevolent spirits, actually. Mm. And, And so if you're going to engage in mediumship of any kind, in, unless you're emotionally sensitive, you've got to be very careful because you, in, in the end, if you don't address your addictions for doing this particular thing, you will in the end end up in a codependent addiction with some malevolent or controlling, manipulative and managing spirits mm-hmm. who eventually will take you completely away from, from anything to do with God or God's love or God's truth. Mm. And there are, many, there are many spirits who only have that intention. So, and unless, unless you can feel them, you won't know that you're getting manipulated or controlled. Yeah. Now, of course, the average person who listens to divine truth on the planet is, and who has a sincere desire to follow it, not, not people, there's many who listen who have very little sincere desire to follow it, but the, average, the person who has a sincere desire to follow it 
is also often surrounded by malevolent spirits who no longer want them to follow it. Yeah. So then if they, that particular person engages mediumship without the feeling, being able to feel when a person is actually malevolent, then um, it's going to be very, very difficult. Now, what I find is the majority of people who are mediums think they know much more than they actually know when it comes to emotion. Yeah. They think they can tell when someone's malevolent when they can't. Mm. And they think they can tell when somebody's sad when they're not. And they mm. think they can tell when somebody's afraid when they're not. And they think they can tell when somebody's ashamed when they're not, and so forth. And because the major many mediums are quite arrogant with regard to what they think, mm -hmm. and they believe they know things that they don't actually know. And their managing spirit, if we can use the term, as yeah. we did yesterday, their managing spirit. So the, the, spirit, the spirit that spirit. they're predominantly in codependence with who brings them so-called knowledge, yes. brings them spirits, gives them the feeling that, hey, you know what you're doing. Yes. Yep. Also has a codependent addiction with them yep. and also has certain motivations that are out of harmony with love. Mm. And as a result, those kind of mediums generally end up in, in places where they don't progress mm -hmm. and, and they are only regurgitating information from spirits who really wish to maintain control. Yeah. And, ma and manage them. And sadly, often end up exerting control and management over other people on earth. That through the them. spirit is yeah. doing that through the medium. Through the medium. Yeah. And we see that occurring frequently. So what you said, often mediums think they know when they don't. Well, this is what the biggest... What can a medium do? What I see is a big problem, just a general thing yes. that to raise, is most people can't, don't have an awakening to sin because they don't think the sin is a sin. Yeah. And the same applies to mediums. Most, pe most mediums don't have an awakening to their true condition because they don't believe their true condition is what it is. Mm -hmm. So they don't have an awakening to it. Yeah. So they believe they know things they don't actually know, only things that spirits are telling them, but they believe they know it. Yeah. They believe they are in a condition that they're not actually in. Mm -hmm. They believe they can help people they can't actually help. Mm -hmm. They believe they've had emotions they've not actually experienced because they've only experienced the emotions of spirits through them and so forth. And unfortunately, many of these people um, do not understand their own state, mm. even though they, are, they have the one emotional opening, and that is being able to communicate with spirits. Yeah. So just because you can communicate with spirits, it does not mean that you are any better or worse than another person. Mm -hmm. But many people who enter codependent addictions with spirits, including mediums who are highly likely to enter codependent addictions with spirits, mm they are now in a codependent addiction getting their own addictions fed and feeding the addictions of the spirit who's managing them mm. and uh, and then as a result how can they expect to really help anybody including themselves mm. yeah so 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 there is a, a large amount of danger from people who are mediumistic to actually have sincerity to work through the issue of sincerity and i don't see too many of them doing that actually and in fact, uh, we've found in the past that many mediums have been the worst when it comes to issues of work, working through issues of addictions and sincerity. Mm. So. And it, do you feel that's because there's a constant sort of, because that codepen codependence is so constant, yep. it's with a spirit who's with the person. And it's 24 7, it's like yep. in their awake state, their sleep state. Yep. It's like all the time. And it's um, they are the best friend. It's difficult for people to challenge it unless they're mediums themselves. Very difficult. Difficult for so the medium can kind of even if the whole world around them is giving them feedback that what they're doing is not kind or is unloving. Well, most of the time the world isn't doing no. that. No, the world, the world's giving them feedback accolades. that what they're doing is accolades yeah, and yeah. attention. That's part of the addiction. Yeah. Every medium I have ever given feedback to now hates me. Mm. Now that's a very that's a very interesting indication. It is because what it means is that every single medium who's ever been associated with me to up to this point has not wanted to have any truth. Mm. They have not wanted to have any to bring their mediumship into harmony with love, yeah. and they've obviously had some heavy addictions with spirits, and those spirits also with them hate me. Mm. which is one of the reasons why the people do. Yeah. Because I've started to confront the codependent addiction between the managing spirit, the spirit mm -hmm. that's controlling them, and the person themselves who's the medium. And when I confront that particular addiction, both parties get angry. Yeah. Right? And both parties then have their justifications to no longer engage the process. Mm. 
So that, that's an interesting thing to be aware of, I feel. If, you, if you're a medium, it's highly likely that you're going to be less open to truth than otherwise. Yeah. And, and because of the codependent addictions. Now, I just need to have a cough. Yes, yeah, so because of the codependent addictions, um, highly unlikely that the mediums are actually going to work through their emotional injuries. Mm. So what I would love to see is many, many thousands, millions I would love to see of, of well-organised mediums who are, who are really sensitive emotionally, who have received God's love, who are no longer in codependent addictions with their managing spirits. In fact, they don't have a managing spirit. Mm -hmm. And they're no longer in codependent addiction with the person they call their guide, because most of the time these so-called guides are not their guide at all, but rather just a spirit who's managing them, claiming to be their guide. Mm -hmm. And if, if we had a group of mediums like that, there would be a huge amount of help that could be given to spirits right from it, those earthbound, including the pet spirits in the hell. Yeah. And, and many of them could be helped in one or two or three occasions mm -hmm. to get out of hell. Mm -hmm. And if that, would, if that actually occurred, then there'd be a huge change of the influences over this planet. Yeah. So, you know, that's what I would love to see occur. And that's one of the reasons why we started our mediumship and healing sessions. Mm. But you see, our mediumship and healing sessions weren't sexy, right? <laughs> <laughs> because they focused on your emotional condition, yeah. developing your emotional condition. Yeah. And most people, when, they talk, when we talked about mediumship and healing yeah. sessions, were thinking there'd be some kind of special thing going to happen, yeah. right? And so, and so they lost steam because the average person didn't want to listen to that yeah. crap as they say <laughs> because it wasn't you know didn't have that grab of them that Something meeting magical. their addictions would have yeah and this is what we notice with people who want mediumship is often they have heavy addictions to desire it mm. and and uh, and don't wish to purify their desire yeah so it is good to have a pure desire to help people yeah but we need to purify our desires before we can truly help any person, including any spirit. Yeah. And, and what I notice is the majority of mediums have no intention of purifying their desire because too many of their addictions are getting met mm. through the mediumship itself. Yeah. 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 So if you are a medium, my suggestion to you is to really concentrate on purifying your emotional desire. Purifying your heart, having a really sincere heart. Now, God will expose any insincerity in your heart. So it's really great if what you could do as a medium is to develop sincerity by this relationship with God, recognizing your sin, having an awakening to it, being repentant for it, working your way through becoming, you know, getting into a higher condition of love rather than just imagining you're in a higher condition of love because you can talk to spirits and other people can't. Yeah. 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 Yep. It'd be wonderful. Yeah. It would help so many people. Yeah, you imagine if we had a team of, yeah. we, one of the things we would love to see is a team of volunteers being shown, taught how to help spirits, but also eventually helping spirits in a really loving and pure way because they love the people, you know, mm -hmm. not because they're doing it for some show, but they really love the people who, who they're helping and they really care about them. And imagine the result. If, if millions of spirits could be helped that way, you, you could potentially help millions of people every, every week yeah. that way. Yeah. And you imagine a million people every week, 365 weeks of the year, there's, there's 3.5 billion people a year. 365 days. Sorry, 365 yeah. days a year. Yeah. Uh, well, sorry, 52, 52 weeks, weeks of the year. Yeah. It means that you've now helped, if, you, if it's a million a week yeah. and 52 weeks in the year, you've now helped 52 million people every year. Yeah. Like, you imagine if we did 10 years of that, yeah. right? Now what is it? It's 520 million people yeah. that are out of, the, uh, out of the hells of the spirit world. Yeah. And imagine if we had a team of 1,000 people doing mm -hmm. that, we could potentially help, you know, a million, a, a, a more, much more than that, a million yeah. people, yeah. millions of people a week. Yeah. Uh, and therefore, within five to 10 years, you could have all of the sincere spirits who, who are just in places of torment and suffering 
who no longer malevolent but who want to progress mm. all gone from the hells and the only people left in the hells after that would be the malevolent spirits yeah. and they would have no way of hurting anybody on earth or anywhere in the spirit world because everybody's dealt with their codependent addictions with them yeah Imagine fantastic that. within a very short time then they could be helped yeah and, and you know you could conceivably within 20 years have not a single person in the hells mm. which is one of the intentions we have yes for coming back yeah. is to eventually empty the hells yeah. to, to help every person on earth and every person in the, in the spirit world who's in hell get out of those locations. Mm. And, and if you could do that, you imagine the happiness that we result from just, just that, uh, that achievement. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, fantastic. so it's a wonderful goal. Yeah. And so I'd encourage Mary to continue developing the goal yes. that she has, but, um, it's is it St Mary or Sandra? Mary. 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 It's Ma yeah, Sandra was the early person yep, yep. that we were talking to. Yeah, so I'd encourage her to have that goal, but yep. but but to be aware aware of the pit pitfalls too. Yes. Uh, in engaging yep. out of harmony with love. Yeah. yeah, and we should thank Mary for her email because it gave us a great opportunity to discuss some really important issues. Yes, yeah, so there are issues we've wanted to raise for a long time. We've yep. seen groups of people start mediumship groups up only for the entire group to leave Divine Truth completely, yep. being manipulated by very, very dark spirits who, who you know, are basically malevolent mm. uh, because they have been fooled, the people on earth have been fooled by those spirits thinking that they are helping them when actually those spirits are, are manipulating them yeah. and, uh, uh, and manipulating people on earth, I mean. Mm. And, and, you know, that's a very sad thing to see. The, the groups of spirits, groups of people start to want to help. Through, you have a, have, a, have a desire. Mm -hmm. It's not yet purified. Mm -hmm. They engage a process connecting with some emotions of glory, attention, approval and other things, only to find that those emotions become heightened they don't purify those emotions. They engage in the process. They get manipulated by the malevolent spirits only to, and their entire faith is destroyed through the process. Yeah. So you don't want that to happen either. No. So what we suggest to happen is, no, at some point you're going to have to open up emotionally and develop yeah. yourself emotionally. Yeah, it really is point. the way to solve everything, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and you've got at some point you're going to have to receive some of God's love for you to be sensitive to what's really going on in the universe around you. Yeah. And uh, that is the most effective way to become sensitive of what's going on around you. And, uh, and if you avoid that process, well, well, other processes are possible, but they're not going to be eff as effective. Effective, yeah. Mm. All right. Thanks, Dylan. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. <laughs>